the three methods to determine if two triangles are similar. So angle, angle, similarity, side, angle, side, similarity, and side, side, side. If you look at angle, angle, you only need two angles of a triangle to be congruent to two angles of another to prove similarity. Because if, this, if these two angles were congruent to those two angles, say this was 150, um, 50, 100, and it's hard to see the markings, what would the third angle have to be? 30. It would have to be congruent. You only need two angles of one triangle congruent to two angles of another. We know or we can then conclude the third angles are congruent, but you only need two. Now, the S's. What's different about similarity than congruency is that with a congruency proof, corresponding sides have to be congruent. In similarity, the corresponding sides are not congruent. The sides are proportional. So SSS similarity means all sides are in the same proportion. So let's say this is 1, 2, and 3 with a scale factor of 4 or a ratio of 1 to 4. This would be 4, 8, and 12. All sides are in the same proportion. Okay. The last method, side angle side, if you have a highlighter, highlight AC and AB. They form angle A. Highlight FD and ED. They form angle D. If the two sides that form the angle are in proportion or proportional, then by SAS similarity, the two triangles are similar. So let's actually underline the angles the sides form. It can't be angle C and angle F. So let's say this is 8 to 4. Give me two sides for the triangle to the right. Yeah. 6 to 3. Good. Down here in example number one, it says determine if the triangles are similar. So without giving any side measure, you're looking, are they similar by angle, angle? When you're given two sides and not all three, you want to see, are they similar by SAS? In the one on the left, it tells you that PQ is parallel. When two parallel lines are cut by transversal, alternate interior angles are congruent. So this angle here is congruent to that angle. So P is congruent to S, and then Q is congruent to T. I could have used the vertical angles, okay, but using just the fact that we have two parallel segments. Now, are they similar? Yes. Two angles of this triangle are congruent to two angles. So yes, the triangles are similar by AA. You don't have to write out the similarity just as we uh, did for congruency. It's enough to say AA, SAS, or SSS. Now over here, this time I will use the vertical angles. So these two sides form that angle, these two sides form that angle. Are the sides proportional? In your reading, it stated that um, in two similar triangles, the two shorter sides are corresponding, the two longer sides are corresponding, the two middle. So if we just take a look at um, S to U, so 39, well, I'll just do the same triangle, S to U to T U. Does 39 to 40 equal 16 over 16? No, it's not the same ratio, so no, the triangles are not similar. If you have a colored pencil, let's highlight in number two, it wants to know which two triangles are similar. So if you just highlight in each one your longest sides in one color, say the shortest in another, you can leave the middle one um, with no color, or if you want, you can add color. So say I add the blue. So 27's in the middle, 18's in the middle, 
and 36 is in the middle. To identify which triangles are similar, we need those triangles which have corresponding sizes proportional. So I'm going to compare maybe longest to shortest. So longest to shortest in this triangle right here would be 39 over 18. Does that equal, longest to shortest here would be, you can look at the colors, I did green to orange, so green to orange would be 26 to 12. Or does that equal, um, green to orange, 56 to 24? So take a minute and look at those ratios. 39 and 18 are both divisible by what? Just to reduce the fraction, 3, greatest common factor. So divide them both by 3, and this reduces to 13 over 6. 26 and 12 are both divisible by 2. So divide 26 and 12 by 2, we get 13 to 6. And then what about 56 and 24? What's the GCF for 56 and 24? Does anyone know? Yeah. Six times what is 56? Yeah, so it doesn't go evenly. What's a GCF other than 8? Yep, 8 times 7, 8 times 3. Which is the equivalent ratio? Your first two triangles here have corresponding sides in the same ratio. So which two triangles are similar in order? So if I said triangle A, B, C, in order of congruency, you can just look at your colors. A is the angle included between the orange and blue side, so that's congruent to P. B is congruent to which uh, angle in triangle, the middle, one, middle triangle? Next one, the sides of a triangle have lengths 3, 5, and 7. So I'm going to draw a picture, 3, 5, 7. In a similar triangle, the shortest side has a length of x minus 3. So since the shortest side of the triangle on the left is 3, the x minus 3 will be labeled here. And then the longest side corresponds with the 7, so bring that over, and this would be x plus 5. So I'm going to compare short to long. So short to long here, we don't need the middle side because I'm not given a middle side on the right triangle that corresponds. So short to long, I'm going to do 3 over 7 equals short to long x minus 3 over x plus 5. Cross multiply, 3 times x plus 5 is 3x plus 15. 7 times x minus 3 is 7x minus 21. Solving for x, subtract the 3x to get 4x equals 15 plus 21. 36, divide by 4, and x is 9. In number 4, we have an 18-foot ramp that's used to load a freight truck. So here's my ramp, here's the ground. And we're going to be looking for how far above the ground is the upper end of the ramp. So the height is drawn perpendicular. So that's what I'm looking for, and I know this is 18 feet. So I'm looking for the height. If you know, okay, something else about the ramp, and what we know is that a point 12 feet along the ramp is 5 feet above the ground, so halfway right here would be 9, so I'm going to say 12 is here. So this dimension is 12, and that is 5 feet above the ground. These two triangles are similar by AA. They're overlapping, so they have this angle congruent to itself by reflexive. So they have two angles of one triangle congruent to two angles of another. So let's actually, instead of doing the proportion, let's do it the way... Uh, Andrew did in the warm-up. 12 divided by 5 is what? 
So if that ratio is 2.4 to 1, okay, or just 2.4, now what do I do with the 2.4 to find the height given the length of the ramp is 18? Multiply 18 times 2.4. Isn't, um, let's go back here, isn't the length, this is longer than the height, right, or larger, the measurement? So we can take 5 times 2.4 to get 12, correct? So it would be this height times 2.4 to give us 18. So you can set it up, if I call this x, it would be 5, um, or not 5, x times 2.4 equals 18. So you would end up dividing. And what do we get? 7.5. So I'm just going to label it feet, and 7.5 feet is the answer. Number five, is triangle ABC similar to triangle ADE? Well, if we highlight ABC, that's the larger triangle. We know two sides. This side is 12. This side is 8. So if I look at the ratio 12 to 8, does that equal the ratio in triangle ADE? of 9 to 6. You can reduce them both, but real easy, the cross products are both 72. Is it enough just to have um, two sides in proportion, two corresponding sides in proportion? No. Well, one we did where we were trying to determine if all three sides we were take, it, it, had, it was given all three, and we probably should have checked all three. But because this angle is congruent to itself, right, overlapping, they are going to be similar by side angle side. So are they similar? Yes. And we want to use the SAS in our explanation. Yeah. So in writing the explanation piece, you first wrote this ratio, 12 to 8, so use that, but it, you, instead of writing the actual length, refer to the side that was 12. So that's AC, so yes, comma, AC over 8, which was AB. So you're saying the ratio of that triangle, those two sides, is equivalent to the ratio of 9, which was your AE, to 6 over AD. Um... And, so you're saying corresponding sides are proportional, and the angles formed by the proportional sides are congruent. Therefore, triangles are congruent. By S A S. So this goes to Yeah. So I had to cross out here and said that the triangles themselves are congruent, the triangles are similar. Okay, by S A S. Now, the triangle proportionality theorem below states that if you have a line parallel to one side of the triangle and it intersects the other two sides, so that would be TU. If it's parallel to the third side, then it's going to divide the two sides proportionally. So I'm going to put just AB and CD. So if TU is parallel to QS, then that means A over B is equal to C over D. The converse would just mean if you switched it and said if A over B equals C over D, 
So if the ratios are equivalent with those two segments, then you could say TU is parallel. But I want you to put a note over here. Another ratio that we probably use more than this one is B over D. So this to this is equal to A to C. So before we do num our number six right here, which is to determine whether they are parallel, let's practice using this theorem before we explain whether the two segments are parallel in words. So it says in the diagram, DE is parallel. Get in the habit of noting parallel in your uh, pictures because that's work, that's explaining. And the ratio of AD to DB is 2 to 5. So AD to DB is 2 to 5. If CE measures 6, what's EB? Well, 6 is how many times as large as 2? 3. So therefore, 3 times 5 is? 5 times 3 as well is 15. So BE equals 15. So with the person next to you, discuss the question to the left. Given the segments, is MN parallel to GH? So I'm looking at this question here and looking at the ratio, okay, of 56 to 48, does that equal 21 to 16? This is fine, reducing them both, but another way to look at it too, so you can quickly see in your work, 16 times 3 is 48, correct? So what's 21 times 3? 63, which is not equal to 56, okay? So that's another way to look at it rather than doing some of the computations, okay? So the answer here was no. To finish the notes are two short proofs. Before I go through these, which method are we going to use? Will it change? Will we always use the same method? AA, SSS, or SAS. Which one or ones plural will we use in a proof? Looking at both pictures and what's given, Are you given any side lengths? So can you determine if you're not given side lengths if the sides are proportional? Can you look at the ratio of two sides if you're not given the sides? No, so yes. Casey, we're going to use AA. AA is short. Now because since we started the class with um, the question, is every pair of two congruent triangles also similar? You can prove triangles congruent first and then say they're similar, but that would be a longer method. All we need is two angles of one triangle congruent to two angles of another. Okay? So number one, given PQ is congruent to PS, these statement and reasons are all the same. So if PQ is congruent to PS, I know that angle one is congruent to angle two. Because in a triangle, angles opposite congruent sides are congruent. So number two is angle one congruent to angle two. And you have to start by in a triangle, because that's not always the case in every polygon. So in a triangle, angles opposite congruent sides are congruent. The second given states that PR bisects angle QPS. So if PR bisects this angle, then I'm going to say number three is congruent to number four. And that's because an angle bisector divides an angle 
into two congruent angles. We didn't even look, or I didn't even look at what we were trying to show. We're trying to show that triangle PQR, so this one in pink, is similar to triangle PSR. In these two triangles, do you have two angles of one can run to two angles of another? Yeah, then they are similar. Because this is our notes, I'm going to just draw a line and put that step four. We don't want to do that on a regents or on any assessment. So that's true by angle, angle. Number nine, it says that angle one is congruent to Q. That's the only thing that's given. What else is true in that picture, Jocelyn? So, number two. Okay, so she said the vertical angle of angle one is congruent to Q. So let's first find, why is that true though? So number two, we know that angle one is congruent to angle two because all vertical angles are congruent. And yes, since, okay, angle one's congruent to Q and one's also congruent to two, we can then conclude angle two is congruent to angle Q. And that's in one of our triangles that we're trying to show. We're trying to show that QPR is similar to TSR, and we now have 1A of AA. But what's the property? Jacob? Substitution. So that's true by substitution, and then what's our last one? We need one more One more property, or one more pair of congruent angles. Yeah. So the two angles here that share a vertex are, so I'll number them since they already used one and two, angle three and four, those are also vertical angles. You could write a separate step, but if you leave room on your state test between each line, then you can go back up and add that, absolutely. All vertical angles are congruent, so angle three is also congruent to angle four. Therefore, you don't have to write it again, the reason. So we're done. Number four, the triangles are congruent by AA.